Director of Player Personnel Duke Tobin and the Cincinnati Bengals pulled off highway robbery with one of their selections in the 2024 NFL Draft. So that's going to be the focus of today's show. We're going to do a little bit of a player spotlight on one of the rooks that were selected in the 2024 NFL Draft. So really looking forward to that and hope you stick along with us through today's show. But before we get into that, make sure you guys give me a follow over on Twitter, at StoneShields underscore. We're trying to get to 400 followers by the end of the month of August. And I think we have the ability to do that. We're on a pretty good pace here. So help me out. Hit that follow button on Twitter, at StoneShields underscore. All of our Bengals content will be posted to my page, as well as any news, rumors, highlights from games or practices. That'll be up there as well. So for all the best Bengals coverage, give me a follow over on Twitter at StoneShields underscore. So the focus of today's show is the highway robbery that Duke Tobin and the Bengals got away with, and that was drafting Jermaine Burton in the third round of the 2024 NFL Draft. Before we get too deep into it, just want to let you guys know that I'm actually self-producing this video right now so if you see me look down sorry about that just trying to do two things at once here but uh, appreciate you guys bearing with me in that regard but really excited to talk about Jermaine Burton I can't believe that the Bengals were able to get a player of Burton's caliber so late in the draft in the third round I really couldn't believe that he wasn't at least a second round guy in this past year's draft, just based on all the things he can do out there on the football field. And, um, you know, he's just such a versatile player. And um, he's really physical at the catch point. He's fast. Um, you know, I think his favorite route is probably just the go route, right? And I think he does an out outstanding job of that and really looking forward to seeing what he can do at the professional level with um, Zach Taylor and the Cincinnati Bengals and Joe Burrow, of course, throwing him the football. Burton played his college ball first two years at Georgia before transferring to the University of Alabama. So it's not like he went to small schools, right? He went to the two biggest ones that there are, and people still seem to overlook him for whatever reason. Obviously, there were some you know, off-the-field concerns when you know Tennessee was kind of rushing the field against uh, Alabama, so certainly don't condone that, but that certainly could have played into why he slipped a little bit in the draft. But I think the Bengals... Got a really good player in Jermaine Burton, and he seems like a good guy as well. That kind of has put that incident behind him. And, um, you know, Burton, I think, has shown that he's uh, been a, could be a solid football player based on his performance in the first two preseason games for Cincinnati. As you can tell on this picture, had a really nice contested catch. Their first preseason game against Tampa Bay also had a touchdown in that game as well. So, um, you know, I think he just really looks like an NFL receiver when he's out there, right? And he has that physical style to his game, and that's really what AFC North football in particular is all about. Like, when you think about going against teams like the Steelers and the Ravens, you got to be, you got to have an you know, undying belief in yourself, and you got to be physical when you're out there on the football field. And I think Jermaine Burton really does an excellent job of doing that, and he does seem like an absolute fearless player. And I think that really should carry over to this level quite well. Here's some of his stats uh, for these first two preseason games thus far. Only has four catches, but he's only been targeted five times. And um, so that's certainly a good ratio there. Has over 100 yards receiving. Does have that touchdown that I alluded to. And, um, you know, there is a, a little bit of a concern as to why maybe it took him so long to get out there on the football field, especially that first game against the Buccaneers. But I really just think as a young player, he might be having a little bit of difficulty uh, digesting the playbook. And the NFL playbook is absolutely no joke. So I completely uh, understand that. And I think just easing him into the action will be really good. Like I said, spent two years at the University of Alabama. And uh, his first two years of college ball were at the University of Georgia. He is a national champion, so he's been around a lot of winning. And, um, you know, even at Alabama, wasn't able to win a national title, but played in some really massive games there as well. And I really like that when I have a receiver that's played in big games in college. So when they play in a massive game in the NFL, it's a little bit more easy to adjust to. Because you think about some of those environments down there in the SEC, those are really no joke. So um, very similar to what he's going to be seeing 
in the NFL, and um, I think he's going to uh, uh, have a, do a good job of kind of easing into uh, that transition as a professional wide receiver. And also, he was really good in those big games, right? I think about the SEC championship game last year against his former school, Georgia. I believe he only had two catches in that game, but they were absolutely massive catches uh, for uh, Jermaine Burton, one of which went for a touchdown. And again, was one of those contested catches for him. And um, in the NFL, those windows are going to be really small, right? So he's going to have to make a lot of contested catches. I love his physicality kind of at the catch point. And um, like I said, I think it's going to be a relatively smooth transition for him over to the NFL, especially once he kind of, uh, you know, gets his feet on, uh, gets his feet wet and just kind of starts to digest the playbook over time and Burton isn't only just getting reps at wide receiver they're also doing some things with him uh, from a special teams department so we're gonna dive into that here coming up next really looking forward to that um, he really has a lot of versatility and that's uh, something that you love especially in a young guy uh, first year in the league you want him to really be able to do multiple things for you out there on the football field and um, you know Jermaine Burton appears to be that guy for Cincinnati but first, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at Game Time because today's show is presented by Game Time. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. And with MLB teams trying to make a playoff push, you can get tickets on the, uh, on the Game Time app to watch the Cincinnati Reds at Great American Ballpark. And you can also get ready to, for football season and get tickets to watch the Cincinnati Bengals over at Paycor Stadium. My two favorite features on Game Time. First is the all-in pricing. Toggling this feature shows the total up front with no surprise fees at checkout like some of the other ticketing companies uh, kind of do to you and also I love the views from your seat you get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy so if you have something that's kind of blocking your view you're going to know what that is kind of going forward before you purchase those tickets so take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time download the game time app create an account and use code chat sports for $20 off your first purchase Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code C-H-A-T-S-P-O-R-T-S for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets at the lowest price guaranteed. So here are kind of some of uh, Jermaine Burton's kick return stats. He had two attempts against the Bears last weekend, both of which went for 29 yards. So I think he really showed that he can uh, you know, be a guy that could threaten for that spot going forward. Um, you know, obviously Trenton Irwin didn't play, Charlie Jones didn't play. Those guys are, um, you know, going to be your returners, especially from a punt return standpoint. Which, by the way, Burton did uh, that as well. Um, actually had a nice punt return, but it got called back due to a penalty. Kick return wise, Chris Evans was going to be in that conversation, but with his injury, he's going to be out for the year. So Travion Williams did play against um, the Chicago Bears last weekend, so he might be the kick return guy. But it is good to see that Burton could be, um, you know, a guy that could fill in in that role. It'll be interesting to see if, um, you know, the Bengals try to move forward with him in that spot or if it's just kind of a preseason tested out thing. But certainly going to be looking closely at that. So these were the wide receivers taken before Jermaine Burton. Obviously, two guys not on this chart, Marvin Harrison Jr. and Malik Neighbors, were the first two taken in the draft. And, um, you know, those guys are absolutely unbelievable. When, when you look at the other 10 guys on this list, I find it hard to believe that all these guys are better football wide receivers than Jermaine Burton. In fact, I'm not buying it, right? I think Burton, there's, uh, I'm not going to point out anybody in particular, but I think Burton is a lot better than some of these guys on that list. And he also has proven, again, coming from a big school. Not that you have to come from a big school, but he's played in big games. He's produced in big-time moments. And he just seems like an NFL receiver. He isn't just someone that's, you know, really quick or shifty or whatever. No, he, he's a physical guy, too, and he'll go out there and punch you in the mouth. And that's something you need as an NFL player. You really got to be, um, you know, an aggressive guy, and you've got to just have an undying belief in yourself. And his confidence level is really through the, char uh, through the roof, and um, I think that's really going to allow him 
to be a solid player at the next level. So I do think the Bengals got a massive steal getting him in the third round of the 2024 NFL Draft. And another thing that Burton has going for him is he's going to be working with wide receiver coach Troy Walters. He can learn from him. Think about the things that Walters has done with guys like Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, right? Um, you know, Troy Walters has proven to be one of the best receiver coaches in the NFL. In fact, head coach Zach Taylor has called him the best receiver coach in the NFL. So I'm really excited to see kind of Troy Walters just get his hands, um, you know, on on uh, Jermaine Burton from a coaching standpoint. And um, I think he's really going to be able to mold him into the type of player that he wants, a player that's going to fit well in Zach Taylor's offense. And I'm really excited to see kind of that progression and that development from Burton as um, you know, he continues to go forward and work with a guy that's so good at his job in Troy Walters. So my question for you guys is, where will the Bengals rank in passing offense in 2024? Rank it for me, 1-32, to 32, of course, 32 teams in the NFL. So let me know. Obviously, this is dependent on a lot of things, not just Jermaine Burton, but I think Jermaine Burton as a rookie is going to have the opportunity to really help this offense take the next step, right? And just be another guy that Joe Burrow can go to um, in big time moments. We obviously know about Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Andre Yosevash. I think is going to be the wide receiver three for this team, who, by the way, went in the sixth round. So that's a whole different conversation. And it's awesome in itself. But the fact you got a guy like Jermaine Burton that's going to be a four, fourth or fifth wide receiver for you, that's pretty scary to think about if you're an opposing defense. So let me know in the comments where, we, uh, where will the Bengals rank in passing offense in 2024. And before we get out of here, make sure you guys subscribe to our channel over at, uh, over here at Bengals Breakdown. We're going to have watch parties all season long, so don't miss out on that. Have two of them. I've had two of them thus far in the preseason, and we've had a really great time doing that as well as nearly daily Bengals videos out for you guys. So don't miss that. Um, you know, hit that sub button for the best Bengals coverage here on YouTube, and uh, of course that is YouTube.com/slash Bengals TV.